Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca, and this is the CCM FT6 Pro Elbow Pads Review. So, full disclosure, just like the gloves and the rest of this set, CCM sent me basically the whole FT6 line to do content on and to make reviews on, and I've used these for a while now. I really wanted to test them out, see how they held up, and this will be the full review of these. We have the glove review out there, we have the pant review out there already, we have the stick review out there, the shin pads, and the shoulder pads will come after this. And obviously right here, we are at the elbow pad. So I also have one on right here for demonstration purposes, have the tacks, which this is going directly up against because these are one of my favorite elbow pads. These are very old, these are just straight up ultra tacks and these are like generations and generations old, but they're solid. And this model is basically used a lot in the NHL still today. So we'll take a look at this, compare the two, see how they stack up, see if this one is going to replace my trusty and very old, but very protective and solid tax elbow pads. And we'll go through all these. I took a look at the FT4 elbow pads in the past. You can see it up there. And I was kind of disappointed in them. They were fantastic in kind of overall design, but there's some things that were really kind of lacking on them and not very good. So if you're interested to see the kind of hierarchy of that, check that out. We'll cover some of those things here. I don't have them. I only borrowed them when I did that video, so I can't do a comparison of them. But before we dive into this review, if you want to support the channel and you're buying hockey equipment anyways, check out the links in the description. If you're in Canada to hockey supremacy, if you're in the US to pure hockey, clicking those links and making a purchase gives me a kickback so I can make more videos and making more content. Usually I don't get gear for free like this set was. So while I'm thankful for that, it is very expensive for me to keep buying all this stuff. So it'd be greatly appreciated and help out the channel. Otherwise, if you don't want to buy any Anything, check out the links in the description to buy me a coffee everything that goes through any of the links always comes back into the channel so I can make it more content and doing more reviews so like I mentioned I have worn these for quite a while right when uh, CCM came out with the FT6 Pro stuff I basically got sent a box with all this so it has been months and months of me using these so I think I have a pretty good idea of how they work I've tested them for multiple games in terms of morning as well as night to see how they are from a drying standpoint especially compared to these and I've done some tests with it for protection where I got my producers to slash me and cross check me and stuff with this stuff on. So we'll take a look at that as well. Now, huge thanks to CCM for sending that. I want to be very upfront about that. If any of these videos help you out for that, please let them know on social media, like through Instagram, say, hey, Hockey Reviews video on. This gear helped me out and I made a purchase or I'm interested in your gear because of it. That'd be greatly appreciated on my end. So hopefully that's this stuff kind of keeps happening so I can keep reviewing more products and stuff like that. So when I wear elbow pads, I wear these and this is cut shield and these are cut resistant slash guards with Evo shield in them. I wear them and it basically goes like right under here. It does an excellent job of one, you have cut resistant and this stuff's used in the NHL now quite a bit too, the cut shield stuff, as well as Evo shield slash guard basically right under here, but it doubles up for elbow pads for slipping. So that doesn't happen at all because it's under there and it's kind of forcing it right down there. Now, I also tested these elbow pads out specifically like this without anything under. I usually wear a base layer. Most of them have grip on it. I also wore a base layer without grip on it to give this the full test on it to really see how kind of these performed and everything. And to just go over these a little bit. So the FT6 Pro line, obviously descendant of the FT4 Pro line and really the descendant of one of the best elbow pads and most popular elbow pads for a long time was the CM Crazy Lights. So they were basically of exposed foam here it was all black though and a three-piece guards pretty similar in terms of like overall design idea so you have your one piece here your other piece is right here and then you do have this separate bottom piece as you can see so that's what makes up the three-piece elbow pad a lot of the mobile and less bulky elbow pads are kind of this three-piece design ccm has continued that for quite a while and they've been pretty popular quick light ones were even pretty popular as well. This one is basically just a two piece design. So you can see this fits on your forearm and then this kind of flexes for the upper piece and that is it. And that's the whole design of it completely. So you can see really the kind of design difference on these, how this one can be a little bit more flexible because that piece moves like independently of your elbow and where this one is kind of locked in, but it's kind of just a different purposes there. I had issues with the FT4 ones in terms of comfort they had a really awful material it was basically this material right here so it's like this kind of scratchy and like weird mesh like material and that was all on the inside of it well it did have like the nice liner like this on the elbow pad over here and everything was kind of that scratchy material and it was kind of all over and it was really awful so as you can see ccm has greatly improved that so you do have your exposed foam right here and then you have a uh, not quite as soft but a decently soft layer right here so this one is totally fine the skin it doesn't really bother me whatsoever then you have a slight mesh one right here 
so you can see that this breathes decently well and as you can see the other side is like that it's a bit spandex to it but this is a very comfortable and soft to the touch so it's pretty great in that sense and then this one you don't feel but then it has this air tech suspension system right here which also feels very nice and soft to the touch so you can see a lot nicer materials than this really awful and uncomfortable material here so they made huge improvements in terms of that and it's nice to see them i don't know if they're listening to feedback or what i realized what their mistake was but this is just an overall much much better design so for the strapping on this i actually found it to be very solid one this is kind of getting a little folded on here because of where that sits on my arm right there so you can see how my arm ends up kind of crushing it i also don't undo this ever i always just leave it on and slide my arm in so instead of actually undoing this like a normal person I just leave this part on, slide my arm in, and then leave it there. So that doesn't help with that either. But I have no issues with that strap overall. This strap as well is absolutely fantastic. And one thing I'm always critical of, and I still think CCM could maybe do something a little more here, is they could extend this piece right here, this like soft Velcro patch, kind of going into here. That would mean they'd have to sew into this foam exposed cap which might be iffy in terms of like trying to actually get this over there. But with that said, I've noticed that I don't really have to tighten this all the way. This is one of the first middle straps where I can just leave it in a pretty covered spot. So basically just right there, it's not even all the way and it feels really good and doesn't really feel like it's one pulling too tight and two, it feels like it's actually holding everything in place. This is kind of a spot I've noticed that have annoyed me in elbow pads where it either gets bunched up here, which obviously this is not, or it cuts off circulation, which obviously this also is not. It's actually pretty loose in there, but it does do a pretty good job of being pretty snug. I really, really like this strap and I honestly, I wouldn't really change anything here at all to change it. Even this where I hate these little pieces because they're harder to get up, it makes sense on an elbow pad here because if you do put that down more that's harder to get at for jerseys and everything and kind of allows your like everything to be a little tighter down in there i do have some issues with jerseys when putting it on it kind of gets caught on things but it's going to happen everywhere so i can't really see anything you can really do on there to change that and it's just a thing that happens with velcro i get why this is there even though maybe having a pull tab right up here to pull it off would be a little bit nicer of a thing kind of like this overall fantastic and it works really well and again it's one of those straps where it does have a nice enough padding in it because there is like a little foam piece right here, which hopefully will come off on camera. You can see how it has this thinner piece and then in the middle, there's like a little piece of foam or spandex because it is stretchy, but there is like a little more bit of padding in there. And that honestly just feels really nice right here and you feel no issues with it whatsoever. So it's a really solid overall design. The other part I really like about the strapping is this piece right here. So they did basically do a full wrap at the bottom and that is fantastic. And I've called this out on ones like this before where this one I always go like as tight as possible and it's almost always overlapping and it's kind of frustrating. They went the whole way. So you would really have to make that really tiny in order to fit that all the way across. But I do love how that is all Velcro all the way through. So that's a fantastic design by CTM to really allow you to customize how tight you have to make this. I'm trying to show this one off as much as possible. I don't have to make it super tight. Mine has all that space left and it's not crunching and it's pretty secure. It's not really going anywhere there and it feels pretty solid. The other interesting part about this is kind of how this can overlap or not overlap. If you really want to, you can kind of pull it over and make it overlap a bit so you get a little bit tighter of a fit. Generally speaking, when I do this, especially with that slash guard underneath, it kind of just sits kind of on the top right like this. So it does kind of leave a little bit of a space kind of right here but that's totally fine. I'll explain that in a second. And it doesn't pinch anywhere or have any issues with it. If I do crank this down a lot like that, I can sometimes feel some pinching on here. But again, that's just you have to adjust where you're actually going for tightness and get it in a comfortable spot. And I found a pretty good one. It's pretty easy to find. I also do love that little tab. Makes it really easy to pull off. Saves your fingers a bit. And while we're on this spot right now, because this is the big part of it, AirTech is totally legitimately a thing. And it works really well on the elbow pads. I mentioned it on I mentioned it on the pants and the gloves so far. Found it worked well on the gloves. Didn't find it made any difference on the pants. On the elbow pads, it is fantastic. The whole point of AirTech is to keep your body cooler. Came from like athletes, like cyclists, where they would dip their hands in cold water before performing. If your hands are colder, you can perform at your peak for longer because it keeps your body temperature colder. This whole thing is to keep your body temperature colder and to keep you cool while playing. And honestly, it works fantastically for the elbow pads almost to a fault at some points because when I'm playing in really cold arenas and cold Canadian weather and we've had some cold weather recently, I honestly am kind of cold while I'm using it. 
So as long as you're going harder than what I am in some of those easier skates, you'll be totally fine and it will really do its job. But it's something I've noticed a lot of and you can see it has the holes here and on both sides. Obviously it goes through and right here as well. And that honestly just pushes air straight through. And when you're skating like this, you can feel it just going through. When you're gliding around, you can feel it going through. I notice it a lot on here, especially because my upper arms get colder with the uh, shoulder pads as well. Down here a little bit less so, but you still definitely do notice it. The other part of it is a suspension system. You can see how it kind of plays back here as well. And right here, so when you put it on, it actually keeps this piece and that piece away from your skin. And you can kind of see it in play here where it's not totally sealed in there and trying to get it on here as well, but it's not totally sealed. You can get your finger in there. That's between the suspension system and this piece. It works. It also feels like you can feel some air coming in through here as well. And it definitely cools you down, especially compared to stuff like this, where yes, nothing's coming through here at all. And as you can see, and I just notice it a lot more when wearing these, how much hotter I am wearing this gear compared to this gear because the lack of that air tech, it honestly makes a huge difference. There's a couple other benefits though from that air tech. One, because it is suspended and you can see it right there, while this technically like really isn't a protective piece because it is away from you when you hit this, that force doesn't instantly go into your body. When you hit this, because it's right on there, that force goes into the forearm. So all this foam has to do all the deadening with this because there is that gap. And again, that's kind of how it sits, right? that gap there is taking away some of the force as well. So that force isn't straight down and it kind of acts as a nice little, I'm not gonna say air barrier because the air is not really doing it. It's just a suspended area there and it works really well actually and the protection on this is pretty solid, but we'll talk about more of that in a second. The other benefit of this is keeping it dry. There's a few parts to this and one that's that exposed foam right there because one that can't really take in moisture. So if that gets wet, the water just kind of slides out. But this part, is the part that does get wet as well. And that part I found, one, it doesn't get soaking wet compared to like a liner like this. When it is wet, it is very wet and I can feel it like if I play within, let's say 20 hours, I can definitely feel it being wet and it's not nice. This one, you can't really feel. If I play in the morning at 9 a.m. and again at night, say 8 or 9 p.m., it's slightly damp, but it's not really wet and it does a pretty good job of drying itself. I'm not putting it in a dryer or anything, just hanging it on a shelf, let it dry, and that does a fantastic job of it. So the exposed foams here, as well as that, does a really good job of keeping it dry and allowing you to play more with it. I'm sure if people are playing every morning, every night, it might not be able to dry all the time without a something helping it with air coming through it. But for me, it's been working and it's better than other ones I've used. So it's a huge benefit there. The inside here liner isn't quite as good for that as well as this. This one is pretty good for keeping like, it doesn't feel gross to the touch. It's a little bit slippery and soft as is, but this stuff definitely does get more wet than what the suspend tech does, but it's still fine and overall solid. The one part about this though, that I have noticed wasn't the best is the donut piece in there. So on the tax line, you have the D3O and the donut for basically extra, extra protection. So you obviously have the shape, but then on the inside you have D3O in there. With this one, obviously you have this shape and there's no D3O in there. So I have found on hard falls directly on your elbow, you definitely feel this one a lot more. It's just not suspended a lot into the elbow pad. So like over here, it's not quite as padded as what this one is. And this one definitely just does feel more suspended. Like all this piece right here, does feel like it's just kind of floating more and you never really bottom out on the protection. It kind of just feels like it sits out there. So when you fall straight on it, you never really feel that. With this one, because it is more kind of wrapped around your elbow and there's less of a donut gap, when you feel that and hit that, you do feel that coming through a little bit more. It's not bad, it's not painful, it's just not as really good as what this one is, where this one's probably one of the better ones for it. This one is just okay. So when we go on to the top piece, I mentioned how great this is for the airflow and you can really feel it. It also has this interesting little hanging piece. So if you wanna hang it up, you can do it that way. The other kind of fun part is it does kind of stretch out. So you can see it is on this elastic piece and then on this like plastic slide right here. So it goes in there. So you can see it kind of comes in and out and expands. So it then can slide up and down your arm a bit. I haven't really noticed this doing that much, to be honest. As you can see, it doesn't really move a lot, but this also isn't cranked. Maybe if I crank it, it will move more, but it doesn't really feel like it all that much moves on there. And it kind of seems like it's kind of a gimmick a bit. I almost wish this had like an adjustment piece where you could slide it higher or not. That way I could kind of pull it up a bit more just to adjust the padding or protection gaps between this and what is on my shoulder pads. But when you do do that, it might leave some more over here exposed because as you can see when you're wearing it like this, that obviously covers right down here, right? So you don't really want it to go up too much because it 
might not cover that spot as well. You can see how that sits and I feel like adjusting that up might help a little bit for coverage, but maybe that's a bit of wishful thinking for that to be an adjustable piece. It totally works fine. It doesn't get in the way at all. I've seen things where sometimes things get caught under there, not these ones specifically, but some really bad ones. And this one is totally fine. As you can see, movement is totally fine and it doesn't get in the way whatsoever kind of an interesting piece there but i don't really feel like it adds a whole lot to the elbow pad at least i can't see it the important parts on this glove obviously is for coverage and you can see the coverage both of these are larges and you can see how jet speed is actually a longer fitting and covers more in than what the tax one does which is surprising because the tax one is supposed to be like that extra protective one now this is an older model so maybe the new ones kind of extended this but you can see that coverage on here with that said because it does kind of stick up a bit more you can see it does kind of interfere a bit with the gloves it's totally fine with the ft6 pro and these are 14 so if i got 15s this cuff would probably come up a little bit higher and a 15 is my proper size on these gloves and it would probably just wrap around perfectly but because it's a bit short you can see how like it can kind of get a little bit caught right there not a huge thing i haven't noticed it with this glove specifically but it's there where this one obviously because this is shorter it doesn't get in the way but this one is also tapered more right so that also means it won't get in the way in that way one glove i did notice i had issues with is with these so these are pro stock tacks these are 14s they, they're fit a 14 and a half and you can see with that cuff it does interfere and i've noticed it getting like kind of in the way a bit here it just doesn't feel that nice and not that it's frustrating it's just that's how these are these are a bit bigger they stick out a bit more so that kind of happens there now if i really wanted to i guess i could crank this a bit more down the side and it would help a little bit with that because it is a little bit tighter but then we're getting into this being a little bit too tight and it still kind of gets in the way right there but that's a very specific glove and a very specific cuff where that's happening to again on the ft6 pro it's totally fine rotates fine this is a more flared cuff than what this is as you can see and just for some argument comparison sakes this is a 15 inch glove and you can see with the flared cuff zero issues whatsoever it does have overlap so your protection on here is fantastic but it doesn't get in the way at all because that cuff is more flared than what that old tax one was and because this glove is a proper size one if it was smaller you might have some issues but it goes up there and just opens up and it's totally fine. No issues, doesn't feel like it's pushing down or anything. Totally good. And this is also a retail glove and a 15 like I should. And again, overlap is totally good, but doesn't get in the way anywhere. But just keep that in mind when you're looking at this elbow pad, because it does kind of have a bit of a wider profile on here. It's not bad where the 2S Pro ones I had got in the way of basically every single glove I had. And it was the actual glove that came with the line where this one doesn't get in the way at all. Just be wary of that and try them on just to see and make sure they work with the gloves that you have. Just obviously you don't want to buy something and it doesn't work with everything. These ones work fine with 99.9% .9 of my gloves. So weight on these, again, I'll say this over and over again. I don't weigh gear because people focus too much on specific weights and not just how it plays and how it feels and if it's like well balanced for sticks and stuff like that. This is a very light elbow pad. It's lighter than this one. When I hold this up in my less dominant hand, which is my left hand, this one still feels heavier than what this one is. And it makes sense because you have some denser foam, but this is overall, it feels really light. It feels solid on my arm. I feel like I'm not really wearing anything. Whereas this one, it is like more restrictive and everything. This one just feels fantastic overall for that. It's very lightweight. It moves around really well. Uh, one really nice thing about that three piece design is you can totally straighten your arm and you don't really have problems with it. And it bends in totally fine as well and which is great whereas this one it bends totally fine but when you straighten your arm this really kind of gets in the way and it's kind of fighting it now you rarely straighten your arm all the way out like this when you're playing but you do notice that where this one feels a lot better and it feels like it's more made around your actual joints here than just a piece sticking on top so finally for protection so we're going to cut to my protection test we'll take a look at that see how it performed with the slash and everything and i'll talk about some real use as well core tech which are core shorts and people have heard of these before they were labeled under under armor before now bauer sells hockey specific one but core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel basically this stuff helps you with growing strains growing pulls and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that and speaking of injuries i kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these core tech shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse when I don't wear them, I can feel and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these. Keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured. So these have been a huge savior for me. Check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount. And I'll put it on the screen here. It helps support 
myself and the channel so I can make you content and doing real reviews, but also you get a solid product that I use all the time and basically am needed. So next we're doing slash on the, basically right here, the bicep guards. Honestly, the jet speed did better than what the tax one did there. You can see with how it's kind of off a bit with that air tech and this one is like thinner and down more and that foam is definitely crushed there. This is because it's further away from your skin. It has that bit of give to it. So this one has definitely felt better on that than what this one did, which is saying a lot because the tacks are really good in terms of slash protection. So the fact that the jet speeds honestly did better than that is telling. Now the whole elbow pad isn't the most protective thing. Right here is a lot softer foam and just overall design, I'm trying to stretch this to kind of show it, than what is on the back of here. So if you got that slash on like the bottom, like right here, this is going to be a lot more protective than what this is. That's just kind of the nature of it. But the big points of where you're gonna get it most, like up here and a little bit on the side, cause they do have that extra foam piece right here. But once it gets down here, you're kind of losing a bit. And then as well, over here is pretty good, but everything in here is just like, it's the donut just does a really good job on this and kind of how the side protection, this is just overall, like this piece is just stiffer and harder than what is here. Up here is solid as well. It's not the most, it's flexible, you can see but it's doing the jet speed job. The jet speed isn't the most protective piece there is, but it's good and it's good enough basically where yes, some of the pieces on tacks and other lines might be more protective. This is lightweight and it's still offering enough protection where you should be pretty comfortable. Like this is more dense. You can see this is just a more dense uh, plastic in here and thicker foam, especially like on the back piece right here. Like the difference in thickness on this back piece is pretty substantial. This is gonna be more protective in certain spots. This one is going to feel fine in most of the spots and it's totally okay. When using this, I've taken a couple pucks off here and stuff, had no issues. Yeah, you notice it, but it doesn't bother you. It doesn't hurt. You just keep going, that's fine. Taking slashes on it does a fine job as well. Very, very impressed with these elbow pads. And honestly, overall, I've worn these things for like eight years and nothing's gonna replace that. I figured, well, maybe another tax. I generally like more protective things. This thing is pretty solid. Maybe if this like wears out more, I'll buy a new tax one. I am wearing these more often than I'm wearing these and not even just for review purposes. Yes, I wear gear to test it, which I've been doing a lot for this. These are so light. The airflow is fantastic that I keep going back to these. And as well, because they always dry out like the second game, I like wearing them more often where these were kind of wet at night when I was using them. This, it just feels nicer overall and is fantastic. So you have to figure out what you're kind of aiming for here and what you're looking for if you want the more protective one. But even then, this is still like pretty solid protective wise and I'm happy to wear them and I block way more shots than I really should. These things have been great and I would easily recommend them to people. Gonna game these a lot and wear them a lot and these are kind of getting slowly retired. I still wear them once in a while, I like changing gear up and stuff like that. And if I go to like certain gloves like this one, I'll wear the tack so they kind of integrate a little bit better. But but these are now my favorite elbow pad and that is pretty high praise for me when I'm wearing something like this and I find something I like, I kind of stick with it. This overtook it and it's very impressive. These I can see really becoming like the staple in the NHL. CCM has a pretty good market share in the NHL in terms of equipment and the tax is a line that people love and the jet speed line, especially the older ones like the CLs, the RBZs and even some quick lights, people, tend to like these, they're solid. I can see this one kind of becoming a staple, just like the tax line has, because this one honestly is just, it has better liners in it than the FT4 did. And it's just honestly nicer than the FT4, but it's kind of going back to what made the jet speed line really popular with that RBZs and crazy lights. So you can probably buy these and use them for years and years. This is like eight plus years of four times a week. So these are probably gonna last, do pretty well too. I have no issues with durability or anything. There's nothing like kind of, no stitching kind of coming loose, no seam issues or anything like that. So everything's been pretty good. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Huge thanks to CCM for sending me these and let me do a review on these elbow pads. If this video was helpful and you purchase anything CCM related because of my content, please reach out to them on Instagram. Let them know that's helpful and what they're doing is helpful to consumers as well. Helps me review more gear and get to test stuff out because honestly, I wouldn't have bought this set if I never got them sent to me. And so I wouldn't have done a review on them just because I had a hard time coming away from these. So I thought, eh, I don't really need to. I'd looked at the fours. What's the real difference? There is the liners and stuffs are solid and these are definitely a really solid product. So huge thanks to CCM for that. And please let them know that these videos are really helpful. Let me know in the comments if you want me to review specific gear. Also let the companies themselves know on Instagram, stuff like that. Let them know if you want to see hockey reviews, review their products, be greatly appreciated. If you want to support the channel, you're buying hockey equipment anyways. If you're in Canada, check out the links in the description to Hockey Supremacy. If you're in the US, check out Pure Hockey. Clicking those links, making a purchase gives me a kickback so I can keep buying more gear and doing more reviews. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, check out links in the description to Patreon, buy me a coffee. Everything through those links always comes back 
into the channel so I can make more content again and making more videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.